flight controller surveyed the scene in the fading light of the early evening. Now that Caden was back on the rails, they could start figuring out exactly how the accident had occurred. Caden, Shane, what happened? Your shunter was fouling the main line when I came through. You were within yard limits. You were supposed to be going at yard speed. What do you think I was doing? You're lucky I was going at the yard speed. You'd be in pieces otherwise. Maybe if you actually concentrated on your work instead of bossing others about. Excuse me. Anyone would think I was fouling the main deliberately the way you're going on. It wasn't intentional. That's enough. Let's just head the facts, please. Caden glared at Shane. I don't take kindly to being accused at the drop of a hat. Caden, I don't think Shane was accusing you. It is a fact that you were across the mainline tracks when he hit you. We wouldn't be having this conversation otherwise. I... when you put it like that, I suppose. The fat controller breathed a sigh of relief. Caden could be a bit of a handful sometimes, even for her. But he did seem to listen to Peter. How did you come to be there, Caden? My engine just gave out, Mum. I think I might have got some of that bad fuel that affected Bear and Patrick. The fat controller looked over at the two mainline diesels, who were looking rather ill. I see. We'll have to have a full investigation of this mess. An inspector is already on the way down from London. Jeff soon arrived to take Shane down to the works at Crowman's Gate. The fat controller had offered to look after the Class 67 repair, and the other rower had gratefully accepted. Once the rails had been inspected and confirmed safe, Peter gently buffed up to Caden. While Shane had come off relatively undamaged in the accident, Caden had been sideswiped by the larger diesel. He would need to be inspected before being moved to the works to determine if it was safe to move him to Craven's Gate. Don't fret, Caden. The people at the works do a good job. I mean, look at the restoration job they did on me. I'm aware of that, Peter. I was there at the time, remember? Yes, I remember. You were worrying about how Sheffield was looking after the yard in your absence. Peter replied. That had been when he and Caden had first met, and they'd been friends ever since. My absence? Oh, yeah, that. Caden, is there something else bothering you? It's this accident. I know I've caused a few scrapes and mishaps over the years. Do you think they'll take my yard away? Why would the fat controller do that? Well... I... Caden, are you somehow responsible for this accident? What happened? I... uh, It it started with that argument this morning. Peter knew what Caden was talking about. Earlier that morning, the heavy goods engine had arrived at Barrow in Furness with his usual fast goods. He'd had a pleasant run up from Napford, but that was about to change. As Peter approached the yard, he overheard the heated voices of arguing engines. Believe it or not, Caden, I do know what I'm able to pull. It is my motor, after all. Yeah, sure. But you've got proper couplers now, and you've not had any trouble with those motor rail trucks. I've seen you and your twin take other trucks, too. In a pinch, yes, but only a few of them. All right, settle down, you two. What's going on here? This ignorant shunter is insisting that I take a full goods train back to Normby with me. It's well beyond my capabilities. Caden scoffed. I'm not buying that. If you weren't able to take trucks, then why were you given normal couplers? To take motor rail trucks, that's all. I've already told you that. Edwin does have a point, Caden. Pacer buses like him are designed mostly to take passengers and don't have that much extra pulling power. Thank you, Peter. He's bigger than I am, and I can move more trucks at once than that. Isn't Owen scheduled to pick those up later? Yes, but it would be more efficient if you would take them. We both know trucks are only useful when they're actually moving. Which trucks are you talking about, Kazen? The ones over there. Peter glanced over. The train in question was only eight trucks long. While well beyond Edwin's capabilities, it would be easy for an engine like him to take. If it really is that important, Caden, you can shunt that onto the end of my return goods. I'll just drop them at Vickers Tower. Fine. With that, Caden departed. Edwin watched him go, then looked over at Peter. How do you do that? Do what? 
get him to listen to you. He's one of the bossiest engines I've met. Oh, we're friends. I see. Well, I must be off. With that, Edwin departed. Peter backed down into the sheds a few minutes later. Caden soon came alongside. I've arranged your trucks, Peter. Thanks, Caden. Well, thanks for taking them down. You know, I can't see how the other engines don't get it. Get what? Trucks only exist to carry goods from one place to another. Having them sitting on siding means they're not moving goods. I understand that. I know how this yard works and how to keep it moving efficiently. Now, why can't the other engines respect that? Respect is something that needs to be earned, Caden. I know that. I've been looking after this yard since 1993. You'd think I've earned some respect by now. It's not that simple. Right, I'll have to go get that. Caden headed off to look after the train that had just arrived, and Peter watched him go, worried. As Caden went about his shunting, he couldn't help dwelling on his conversation with Peter. It wasn't that simple, Peter had said, but how hard could it be to earn respect? His job was to run the yard, and that was what he did. Arranging trucks was only part of it, albeit a fairly significant part. He had to make sure the other engines went where he needed them, to keep things moving smoothly and efficiently. Bossy, that's what the other engines called him, but that was what was needed. They could at least accept that, Caden thought. I'm afraid to say, all this musing and rumination had put Caden in a bit of a bad mood by the time Henry arrived with the goods train. You're late. I know, I know. There was a bit of confusion about the trucks at Kelswood Road. I'll have to drop them and run, I'm afraid. I'm due to take a passenger train back soon. Before Caden could reply, Shane arrived with the train from the other railway. Shane, leave your trucks on track 5. Track 5? Track 1 is the arrival track. Caden, the first four of these tank trucks in my train have fuel. The other one has milk. Right, right. Shane, I said use track 5. I'm about to shunt these trucks from Henry onto track 1. If you do insist. I do insist. Just put the trucks where I need them, will you? Shane knew that it was pointless trying to argue with Caden when he was in a bad mood. It was best just to humour him and be done with it. After shunting his trucks, Shane headed off to get some fuel. Once Shane was clear, Caden turned his attention to Henry's train. Driver, what did Henry say about the tanker trucks on his train? I'm not quite sure. Something about the first and milk. We were keeping an eye on Shane at the time. Caden paused and thought for a moment. It was too late to ask the steam engine about it now. He was already being turned and refueled for his passenger train. He did say something about first and milk. That must be where the shipment from the Toriak Dairy is. We'll have to shunt the last four over to the fuel depot. With that, Caden got to work. He quickly shunted the four rearmost tankers from Henry's train and brought them over to the fuel depot. As he backed the tankers down, one of the workmen looked over. Good thing that fuel's here. The tank's nearly dry. This lot should be what you're after then. With that done, Caden headed off to continue his work. But, as the workmen began unloading the fuel, None of them realised that they had the wrong tanker. The one with the milk was the first to be unloaded, so by the time the next diesel came to take a drink, the fuel was well and truly contaminated. Patrick refuelled from there after that. When they broke down, I realised my mistake. I was trying to get to the fuel depot to warn them when my own engine failed. I see. So it wasn't bad fuel, but contaminated fuel. Were you, Patrick and Bear, the only engines affected? I think so. But what do I do, Peter? I mean, this is going to be found out. Caden, you made a mistake. In my experience, there are two ways of dealing with mistakes. What are they? The first is to disown them, to try and deflect the responsibility. The second, and the proper way, is to take responsibility, learn from them, and move on. So... You think I should own up? It is the right thing to do. On top of that, I think the Fat Controller will take your honesty into account. Right. Think about it carefully, Kazan. Peter advised as he departed.
Early the next morning, the Fat Controller arrived with an inspector to talk to Caden. The little diesel had been considering Peter's advice all night. He told the Fat Controller and the inspector everything he'd told Peter. Thank you, Caden, said the Fat Controller when he'd finished. I want to take responsibility, Mum. It was my mistake. We'll see where the responsibility lies when the investigation is finished. But I must ask, Caden, have you learnt something from this? Caden thought for a second. I should pay more attention to my own work. Indeed. Jeff will be taking you down to the works for repairs, and Sheffield will be taking over your yard until you're done. Sheffield? But... But nothing, Caden. He is needed on the Brenham branch, but I've had to reassign him here due to this. Edward and Boko will be very busy until you're repaired. Ah, Caden replied, and he fell silent. A short time later, Jeff took Caden down to the works. Class 2 diesel had been badly damaged, and his repairs would take a while. A couple of weeks later, Caden's repairs were complete. As he stopped in the barrow yard, he looked around, aghast. Sheffield, what have you done to me yard? Shunted it. What do you think? I know it's not how you do things, and to be honest, I don't care. You could run it your way once I've left. What? What? That's enough, you two. Both engines looked over to see the fat controller standing next to the tracks. Sheffield, you're needed back on the Brendan branch. Edward and Boko are quite overworked. Yes, ma'am. As Sheffield left, the fat controller turned her attention to Caden. As for you, Caden, the investigation found that you were partially responsible for the accident. Partially responsible? The workmen at the fuel depot should have checked what they were pumping. However, you should have also been paying attention to what you were doing. Henry did tell you which tankers had the fuel. Yes, ma'am. There is one other thing, Kate. Given your history of mishaps and the damage done on this occasion, the other railway wanted another engine to take over here. You mean they wanted me replaced? Yes, and it took a bit of convincing before they backed down. But I'm afraid you're on your last chance now. Don't let me down. I won't, ma'am. The fat controller left, and Caden returned to work. As he did so, the diesel found that he had a lot to think about.